Hello everyone and welcome to a very cold and snowy highlands. If you've not been before, welcome to the channel. If you have been before, welcome back. It's been a while. We've got an exciting new venture ahead. We have partnered up with Crawford's Metal Detecting and we're going to be bringing you all sorts of content about all things metal detecting. How cool is that? We're even going to get our very own discount code. So if something we talk about is something that you like, then you'll be able to go and get it for some money off. As a YouTube content creator, I get asked three questions an awful lot. The first is, which detector should I buy? And that is very much dependent on what kind of detecting you're going to be doing. Second is, should I buy this coil for this machine? Is it really all they say it is? And again, the question is, what kind of detecting do you do? And then I can answer that. The third question is, I've bought my detector. Now, do I need to go and buy this really expensive pinpointer or this really expensive this or this really expensive that? Um, and that's what the first video that we make is going to be about. Stay tuned. So our question for today is, I bought my Vanquish, my Simplex, my Ace. What do I buy next? What do I need to get? Um, should I get the pinpointer? Should I get the digging knife? Should I get the spade? What should I buy? Um, considering I've already spent quite a lot of money, <laughs> what, what should I go for? Um, and I'm going to give you my opinions based on my experience, things I wish I'd bought earlier and things that I wish I'd have waited on or didn't need to buy altogether. Right, okay, so you've got the detector. Now what do I need to get? Well, the first thing you need to get is protective clothing. I myself have gone for Army Surplus Gore-Tex jacket, always wear layers, have a set of coveralls that I've gotten from Lidl that I put on over my clothes and over tights and things uh, to stay nice and warm and I can peel them off afterwards and uh, just throw them in the washer. Um, warm boots, uh, Wellingtons or something waterproof and with a lining because you really do not want cold wet feet. An absolute disaster out here and if you're not comfortable you're not going to stay out detecting. So the first place I think you need to spend your money after the detector, if you don't have it already, and if you live in Britain you really should, um, if you live in Florida or somewhere else, you're going to have completely different needs and you're going to need things like sun cream um, and considering, you know, your environment. But in a temperate climate where it gets cold, we need protective clothing first and foremost. You don't need to get frostbite. You don't need to get yourself ill um, from being out detecting. And if you're miserable, you won't stay out. Uh, as part of that protective clothing, gloves are really important. Now, I use a combination of these heavy duty marigolds. They're not the yellow ones that you use for washing up. These are heavy duty ones and I use them for waterproofing under a pair of ones like this that I got at the local filling station, but they're not waterproof. They're about three quid. You can also use neoprene gloves underneath they'll add an extra layer of warmth. And if you have that slightly deeper pocket, or you know, your people ask you, what do you want for birthdays, Christmas, Mother's Day, all that sort of thing, then you can splash on a pair of proper detecting gloves, really, really nice quality, have the Velcro at the cuff. So when you go to put your hand through the cuff on your detector, you are able uh, to fit it through. See on my jacket here, keep the cuffs tight so you can get back in and out through that cuff on your detector. So really good quality, reinforced in the places you need to, um, and uh, you can stick something waterproof on underneath and uh, these will last you. The, uh, the cheapy ones that I have, you will have to replace. So it's up to you which way you go. So we've got our gloves, uh, we've got our waterproof clothing, our warm clothing, so we're not gonna freeze to death. You need a spade. You need a spade to dig up all this fantastic stuff you're going to find. And a lot of people start out with the little yellow ones. I don't think the little yellow ones are a very good buy. They rust, they bend, you're going to replace it and they're gonna do your back in. The only thing they have going for them is they're cheap and they're light, but you're gonna do your back in. You better to just get a good spade to start with. Now I went from a yellow one 
to one that I bought uh, from an international online retailer whose name shall not be mentioned. Uh, it was a trenching spade and I really liked it because it had a nice deep blade so it did a good plug and I could get right down to where I was finding those deep signals. The problem is you have to lift your foot up so high to get onto the top of the tread to push it down and places where your footing's a little uneven that was difficult and it was also heavy. You can go for something like these. That's uh, There's a black ada in there. Um, and uh, they're not cheap, uh, but they will last you a lifetime. They are sturdy. They are made for metal detecting. Um, if you're on a budget, check out the Loxley that Crawford's does. It's a little short one. It's not as short as the yellow one, but it's really solidly made. And it's only about 12 quid and that will last you. Uh, and it's particularly good if uh, you're out on an environment like the one behind me, which is a mixture of mud, shingle, sand and rocks. And it's nice and light and it just levered under there really well. So a good spade. If you buy a cheap one, you will be replacing it um, and you may hurt your back and then you can't detect anyway. Okay, so you've got your spade. What do you need next? You need a baseball cap because no matter what headphones you have, unless you've got the diving ones, they are not waterproof. And if you don't have a baseball cap, they slide off your head and they land in puddles and they land in the mud and then they're going to be wrecked. And that's no good for anybody. Now, I have the knitted cap on over the baseball cap here. And I just pull this off. This is for warmth because as you can see, it's snowing and absolutely freezing cold. But a baseball cap keeps your headphones on your head. They don't slide. My hair is particularly slippy. Headphones come off, but I've spoken to many, many detectorists and they say the same thing. They slide off. Headphones slide off. And you really do not want your expensive wireless headphones landing in a puddle. You don't want your wired headphones landing in a puddle or mud and being ruined. So a baseball cap. And I have had the tip from some gentlemen who are uh, follicularly challenged, shall we say, that they put a bit of Velcro on the inside of their headphones and that helps stick it down to their hat better. Um, that, that works for them. But even people with no hair find that the headphones just slide off their head. So you really do need a baseball cap. So that's your second, third, third purchase actually. So the fourth thing you need is a fines bag. Now they come in all kinds of price range. You can get your basic models like this one and it's just open at the top and that gives you a place to put all that stuff you're going to dig up. And as a beginner, you're going to be digging up a lot of stuff. Trust me, because you need to. You need to dig up the stuff to learn the tones, to figure out how your machine works and to get good at it. So you're going to dig up lots of stuff. Um, you get ones that are slightly dearer. You get some that go up actually a fair bit in price. Um, these ones don't have a flap that goes over the top. They're just opened, but they both come with a belt. Other ones come with the belt. Some you get that have a flap that come over. Um, and my grotty one there and they have various pockets and things to stick things in and you need a fines bag. Um, not super expensive, but after you've gotten your detector, your protective clothing, your spade, your cap, finds bag. Um, again, this hobby, all of these things don't have to add up to a lot, but you know, get the best quality you can uh, because otherwise you will upgrade later on. But use those holidays, Mother's Day, Anniversary, Valentine's Day, uh, Father's Day, Christmas, all of these things. I've added stuff on every single one. Um, Okie dokie. Uh, you need a little finds box. These are not expensive. This is a Crawford's one. I particularly like it because it has this handy dandy bigger compartment in it. And if you find bigger coins like Victorian half pennies that we find here in the UK, a lot of the finds boxes don't have a big enough compartment to put them in or the bigger dandy buttons. So I quite like this one. It's literally a couple of quid. It pops into your finds bag and you're off. So you don't have to have it. You can stick them in your top pocket like they do on some of those TV shows we won't mention, but you know, um, they don't cost much and it's quite nice to have all your treasures in one place. And you will find those treasures, I promise. We're gonna teach you how. Um, so you got your finds box, pen pointer. 
And this is what I get asked about an awful, awful lot. And this is where I recommend you need to spend the money. I watched another YouTuber's content and he had bought one of these um, orange replicas online of a certain make and said it was fantastic uh, pinpointer, it lasted him great and, uh, and, and all of that. So I purchased one. As a matter of fact, I have the box up here somewhere. Yep, there we go with the thing in it. Um, and it's not waterproof. It promptly died and it was rubbish. And I was terrified to use it because it wasn't waterproof and then it died anyway. Your pinpointer is going to get bashed, knocked, dropped, drowned, mudded, everything under the sun. Get a good one. Literally, you need to start and you need to spend about 70 quid for the basic one that is tough and robust enough. Now, I'm not going to give any recommendations, but go and do your research. See which has the features you need. Uh, but I would definitely say you need to be spending at least 70 quid. 70, 80 quid on a pin pointer, or you will replace it. And your 30 quid or 20 quid that you've spent on that cheapy one is just thrown away. So really, seriously, spend your money on a pin pointer, depending on which one you get. I mean, look at the state of mine. Look at the state of that thing. It is bashed all over the place and it's indestructible. So don't go cheap on your pin pointer. With a pin pointer, you do not need one, which is why I've put it this far down on the list of things you need. You can take fines in your hand. You, you can take handfuls of earth and wave them over your coil until you actually find where your signal is. But if you're detecting out in something like this, it's black mud. You can't see where the things are. Um, and a pinpointer just makes life a lot easier. Not a necessity, but it is something Really so nice this stuff. is where you need to bring it into your kit bag after you've got your detector, protective clothing, spade, cap, fines bag, fines box, pin pointer. Okay, so you've got your pin pointer. Uh, what next? People always ask you what you're wanting for holidays. Trust me, this is this is this is my experience. I bought stuff I didn't need. You know, learn from me. Uh, is a digging knife. That's the next thing. Now, your pin pointer is a scientific instrument. It is not a digging tool. Remember this. So, I have one of these. If I can get it out, it is uh, kind of muddy. Looks like that. Okay. Um, you can also go for ones that are a slightly higher price bracket. Go that are also extremely indestructible. This little puppy, look at that. This is an evolution one. It's got a nice backstop, so when you scoop it up, it takes the dirt out. It's got lovely blades for uh, if you need to cut through roots or whatever. And uh, I would highly recommend a digging knife at this point. Do not use your pin pointer. Do not. You can certainly exist without one. If you're a beach detectorist, you're not going to need one. Um, if you use a trowel, make sure you get one with a really, really strong neck. Otherwise, you're going to bend it and you're just going to be throwing your money away. So get a good digging knife. Don't, don't waste your money. It's not a requirement, but... Okay, so we've done the digging knife. Then what would I say? Uh, I would say... Knee pads. Literally about a tenner from your local builder's merchant. Um, they will save your knees. You can see the state of these things. That's from yesterday's digging out in the mud. Keeps your clothing clean. Um, you know, not expensive. Again, not a requirement. A nice thing to have. But knee pads comes in at this point. Okay, then a spray bottle. Just a little one. I don't have one to hand. Just a little one. Uh, for when you find your silver, clean it off with your spray bottle. Don't wipe it. Don't scrape it. Don't scratch them. Uh, just a little spray bottle. Um, not a, you know, not a necessity, but that's kind of where I'd say to purchase things. Now, your last item, well, not your last item, but uh, this is getting into the luxury sort of things of, you don't need it, but <laughs> nice to have. And this is our economy luxury, and that is a spades bag. Yeah, eight quid at Crawford's. See those nasty, dirty spades? You put that in it, keeps your car clean. Definitely not requirement. I've used bags for life and carrier bags, but they do always poke through them. And this is nicely reinforced at the bottom. So it's not gonna poke through it. And uh, really, really handy, not expensive, but again, not needed. It's a luxury thing. It's a present item. 
Uh, the other thing I would say is your most expensive luxury item that I would, I would recommend where you buy things, and that is a detecting bag like this one. Uh, it will protect your detector. You can see it fits lots of things in it. Um, and if you've spent a lot of money on your detector, getting something like this that is padded and easy to carry, you know, you don't need it. They're not cheap. To get a good one, they're not cheap. And you need to get a good one. But um, if, if you've gotten all the other stuff on the list and you're thinking about what else, get one of those. This is also presupposing that you have gotten coils and everything else that might improve your detector and you will need to look for your particular detector. What's the best purchase of coil for that machine? Uh, okay. I haven't talked about something that I do quite find quite valuable because I'm not really sure where to put it in for people. Um, but that is a detecting vest like this. You get the Viper ones. This one came off of that online retailer. It was a present from my daughter. It wasn't that expensive. It's a fishing one. And it has pockets everywhere, as you can see. And I keep all of my detecting stuff in it. I hang it up when I get home and it's all ready to go. When I go back out again, I keep a, a, snick, a, a chocolate bar in there. I keep my special finds box in there. I keep my reading glasses in there. I keep a little toothbrush in there or some toothpicks, you know, for fine detail. I keep your spray bottle in there, that sort of thing. Uh, really, really useful. But some people might have jackets, have lots of pockets, so they don't need one. Um, it's not a necessity, but it's a really nice thing to have. Just really handy. So think about, you know, a fishing vest at some point in your uh, journey of purchasing things for your metal detecting. Thank you.